I'm a material scientist at the University of Birmingham. The thing that is most beautiful as a material scientist is the way the cornea is organized. So you have layers of collagen organized in one direction, then in the opposite direction, and layered on top of one another. The thing that's really amazing about the eye is even when the surface of the cornea is compromised, such as is shown here, the eye will start to re-epithelialize and it will start to redeposit that highly aligned collagen. Now the major issue is where you introduce some kind of infection onto the surface of the eye. So this is a, an image from Perlman et al. looking at Pseudomonas keratitis. The Pseudomonas infection effectively drives an inflammatory cascade, which then ultimately re results in the deposition or the production of a molecule called TGF beta 1. TGF beta 1 uh, is produced locally, and what it does is it causes cells called fibroblasts within the cornea to differentiate into cells called myofibroblasts. Myofibroblasts have the capacity to produce collagen at a far, far higher rate than fibroblasts, but they also have this character that enables them to contract the wound up together uh, and really allow the wound or to close even more quickly. The major issue is that rapid closure means that you lose that capacity to act as a diffraction grating, which effectively results in the person having a completely clouded cornea. Now, the thing that's fascinating is there's lots of molecules that you can find within the body that can be utilized to try and damp that early inflammatory response that you get after an injury and after an infection. Um, and one molecule that we're particularly interested in uh, is a molecule that's called decorin. Decorin is thought to be one of the molecules through its affinity to collagen that organizes the arrangement of collagen on the surface of the eye and gives it that optical transparency. But the other thing that decorin is able to do is it mops up TGF beta 1. So the idea is that if you can have decorin present within a solution, the decorin will begin to sequester TGF beta 1 and sequester it into the extracellular matrix and that will reduce the number of cells that differentiate from fibroblasts to myofibroblasts and thereby that will actually uh, reduce uh, the rate at which collagen is deposited and allow for a more orderly deposition of collagen across the surface of the eye. Now there's a couple of issues with decrin. The first one is that they're very, very difficult to, to deliver to the eye surface. So when it's delivered as a PBS drop, it's only retained for a very, very short period of time. Now this is particularly problematic because of the cost of the molecule. If you're blinking the majority of that away, then that is a lot of wasted therapeutic and it makes the therapy financially unviable. Now what we're doing in my group is we're working a lot on something that a lot of people probably don't find really, really interesting and that is, that is eye drops. So eye drops themselves, if they're made without any kind of structuring, are retained on the eye for only a matter of seconds. If you're able to actually thicken the eye drops, and you can thicken eye drops by adding polymer into them, the polymer chains start entangling with each other and that creates a more viscous solution that can then be retained on the surface of the eye for much longer. So what we did is, is really look at how we could employ the eye drop that we developed to deliver it to the surface of the eye itself. So we spent a period of time taking the decorin molecule and we formulated it into our eye drop and then we tested it first in an ex vivo model of corneal damage. These are pig's eyes and what you can see is with a gelan fluid gel eye drop with the decorin, we actually had restoration of that epithelial surface much, much quicker than when the eye drop material was used on its own. To show that it was efficacious, we had to test it in a much more aggressive model of microbial keratitis. So one of uh, my postdocs at the time, Lisa Hill, went to uh, University of California, Irvine, where she worked on a model where they effectively scratched the surface of a rodent eye um, and introduce a pseudomonas infection onto the surface of the eye until the eye ulcerates, um, and then apply uh, gold standard treatment. So you look at dexamethasone and gentamicin sulfate drops to get rid of the infection. And then what they do is they look at uh, restoration of the corneal epithelium with time, and they keep the experiment going out to around 16 days. Now we can see here is significant amounts of opacity still left at the surface of the eye after 16 days. There is a slight reduction that we've quantified when you use the eye drop on its own. So we think actually the eye drop is enabling better retention 
with a gentamicin sulfate and dexamethasone on the eye. But when you use the Decarin fluid gel, you have a better restoration of clarity on the surface of the eye. The thing that was really remarkable was the restoration of what we call the histology of the eye. This is the eye uh, sliced through the upper axis and then we stay in the cell nuclei here with uh, a stain called DAPI. And what you can see, this is the intact eye and you can see five layers of cells uh, comprising the cornea. This is the eye after damage. This is the gold standard treatment. You can see the restoration of some of the layers but when you actually start adding the decorin at the bottom, you actually restore the original histological appearance and thickness of the cornea after a relatively short time period. We will start a trial um, in the coming year with Cyros, uh, a BMEC, looking at using it as a, a, a treatment uh, for patients who have uh, microbial keratitis. I think, though, that the, the true impact of this is, is going to be much, much more global because patients who present early enough end up with a good outcome anyway. Um, but talking, well, when we published our last paper and we had a press release, 95% of the people who wrote to us afterwards were from India and uh, Pakistan and China who uh, basically have corneal uh, clouding on the basis that they haven't sought uh, or they haven't got such ready access to healthcare, and so their scarring on the surface of the eye has progressed much more significantly. Um, so there's likely to be a huge market. With tw there's 28 million people worldwide who have gone blind as a result of corneal abrasion.